So what the hell happened with the Raiders offense in the second half? It looked like it was moving the ball at will. I was sitting here, you know, watching the game saying, okay, the Raiders are all the way back. They look great. I'm very interested in seeing where they go from here. Uh, and then the second half, so they only scored three points in the entire second half. You know, the defense giving up the points to Kyler, to me, that was just kind of Kyler Murray making great plays. I'm not too concerned about that. But the offense, to me, is the more, I think, interesting question to talk about. What went wrong? Uh, which, you know, second week in a row now, I have to make a what went wrong Raiders video. Uh, hopefully they can turn this around. But one of it was just, like, mistakes that really aren't devastating, like, or at least shouldn't be devastating. Like, these are mistakes I expect to be fixed. But, you know, when you make a number of them in a half of football, then it, uh, you know, it can cost you a game. Like, something like this, where if you watch that video I made when I broke down the game right after it happened, I talked a lot about how the Raiders did a great job at just exploiting mismatches. And this is a perfect example of a mismatch that the Cardinals really need to stop doing. But what's going to happen is they have a, a linebacker on Hunter Renfro. Because Hunter Renfro is lined up in the slot, they're having a linebacker cover him since they want the cover one robber of both safeties staying deep. The Raiders are in five wide, and so they're, you know, the Cardinals are putting a linebacker on Renfro, which is, you know, it's, I just don't know if I love this decision by the Cardinals, and this is where you can take advantage if you're the Raiders, and this is how the Raiders have been successful in the entire first half. Watch how when Carr looks in Renfro's direction, Renfro is open. So, okay, here we go. Let's start to move the ball down the field. It's sort of second down and long, but we can make it at least third down and short, maybe even pick up the first down right here. So, this is what you want to do. This is how you move the ball down the field. Carr throws it a bit high because of pressure in front of him, and it's a bit far. Renfro can't make the catch. This is something that Carr and Renfro usually hit on, but they weren't able to hit on it on this play. And I kind of felt similar last week where there's just a few mistakes that, you know, ended up swinging the game. It feels the same way this week where it's just a few mistakes that ended up being the difference in the game for the Raiders. They kept screwing up on these plays in the second half. And it was, you know, it's not schematic. It's not talent. It's just sort of mistakes, which do happen in a game. And unfortunately, it cost them the game against Arizona, I think. We also have this one. So what's going to happen here is it's going to be a zone coverage play. It's cover three zone. And, you know, great concept to get guys open, especially against what the Cardinals have been doing, playing a lot of zone coverage here. So, okay, take advantage of that. Get the ball to your best player, Devontae Adams. It's going to be a play action. You hit Adams over the middle. The linebackers move in due to the play action. Great concept. Every team runs some variants of this play to some degree. For a reason, it tends to work. Watch. Carr takes the snap. Carr is going to look towards Adams right here, who is about to get open. So, down the field, this play is absolutely working. In fact, somehow both receivers who are running routes on this play are about to get wide open, which seems like not the best coverage that there's only two receivers running routes and neither one of them uh, are covered. But for Derek Carr, the issue is what you see right in front of his face. There's pressure right here. And that is definitely something that's been an issue for the Raiders that they need to fix is their offensive line has struggled, which we knew it would struggle heading into the season. We knew that was kind of one of their weaknesses heading into the season. But still, you just hope it doesn't come into effect at the worst possible times. And this is one of those worst possible times uh, where, you know, you're in a situation right here. You get someone wide open. And, you know, I also should mention, I actually think the offensive lines played better than I would have expected it to play heading into this, uh, you know, heading into this season. So that's kind of the the good news, I guess, is that it hasn't been as bad. This is Andre uh, James who's giving up uh, this play. But as you see, Carr just, you know, the ball gets hit as it's thrown. He just can't do anything about it because of the pressure. So that's just an unfortunate break, really. I mean, I can't say it's an unfortunate break. It's a good play by Arizona. It's a bad play by the Raiders. You don't want to give up that pressure. But at the same time, these are one of those things where, you know, in a situation like this, you just don't want to give up pressure when you have someone that wide open because that really hurts you a lot more. Like, you know, if you're going to give up a pressure, give up a pressure when no one's getting open. That's the idea. It just didn't work out that time. And again, there were just, there were mistakes. You know, mistakes can kill you in a football game. Where, first off, Bit of an interesting play call. I've noticed this a bit from Josh McDaniels where, you know, he always likes to kind of not push the ball down the field, but instead set guys up to try to get yards after the catch. That's always just been a big part of his scheme in general. It's part of why the Raiders wanted to bring him in because they have guys who are talented enough to take advantage of that kind of scheme. I get it. But, you know, on a third down where you have to get to the 21-yard line, you're currently on the 11-yard line. 
I would have maybe liked to just say, hey, you know what? Maybe just send Devontae Adams deep and try to get, you know, throw him the ball to him. That tends to work out pretty well on top of that. But that's not what they're doing. They're running a tight end screen here, trying to pick up the, you know, the first down here. But you see on paper, this can absolutely work out. I mean, if both receivers make their blocks and you can just pick up the 10 yards, yeah, this can work out. There is a chance that this can be successful. However, as you see, I can't even really figure out exactly what happened here. And I think the ball might have been tipped is what happened, which has created the weirdness, which allowed it to be dropped. But that's just, again, it's an unfortunate error. And it's kind of just one of these fluky plays beating yourself to allow something like that to happen. And finally, one more play. This is, I think, good on the Cardinals. Is that, you know, the Cardinals have been trying a lot of exotic stuff this season so far. I would say most of it has not worked. I think they need to find, I mean, I, I guess I get the logic behind it. They feel like they don't have a ton of talent on their defense. So they're trying to, you know, instead scheme things up and figure out ways to make stuff work where, you know, hasn't had the best results so far. But this one is going to be good results where you see there's so many Arizona players lined up on the line. They've been doing that a bunch this game. They are going to drop back into a zone coverage, but what's interesting is that if you count up the number of circles I have put on the screen, there's only six and not seven. So this is not going to be a four-man rush. It's going to be a five-man rush. That Arizona player will be going into uh, that side of the field to try and you know disrupt Derek Carr. And as you see, look at how well it works. He gets completely by untouched, and at this point, you know, yes, you have three receivers running deeper routes trying to get open down the field, but the issue is that Derek Carr doesn't have time to get it to any of them. And while it's always going to be fun to blame the offensive line for plays, this isn't really on the offensive line. This was a, a blitzer getting through untouched. Really, Carr should have had a prepare, had a better plan for that, I would say. You got to have someone who's able to block him if he is rushing the passer. That's what you typically want to do when you, know, you see guys lined up at the line. You want to have a plan for it, even if your plan is just know where you're throwing the, the football right away if that happens. Something like that can be a plan. Carr seemingly didn't, and now he's in trouble. So he is instead just going to flip it, but they're just, you know, they're not able to get anywhere close to the first down on that one, and they ended up punting the ball away. So things like this is what completely stopped the Raiders offense from being able to be as successful as it was in the first half. I don't think it's a huge deal. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think that they will be okay. I think that they will figure it out, and I think that they will find ways to not have a massive issue with this kind of stuff. That's what I think. But the reality is, this cost them a football game. I mean, if they made a couple of these plays, they win this football game against Arizona, and they're now 1-1. One and one. And losing a football game that you should have won is going to be really tough in the AFC when you're trying to make the postseason. And you could argue that if they didn't beat themselves in Weeks 1 and Weeks 2, they would be 2-0 and right now. I would make that argument, actually. So you've already cost yourself two games that you probably should have had. And if that's the case... You could really be in, in trouble quickly, I think, because you really need to, I mean, your margin for error being 0-2 is basically zero now. You can't be continuing to throw away games like this. At least that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on, uh, you know, the collapse, semi-collapse, whatever you want to call it, that the Raiders had? Put it, uh, let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.